my time in is genius. Now you have a, an unintrusive way of letting the employee know that, hey, we're a blended workforce. You have an opportunity to work from home. Why did you originally hire my app desk? If I can take credit for anything, it's that from an implementation standpoint, because when I first mentioned the virtual assistant opportunity, I got a lot of pushback uh, from not only my partner, Scott, but also the, uh, the department heads. Yeah. And I, was, I think it was just me knowing because of my relationship with you on how you can scale quicker and access this great talent and not have the same thing that everybody else does. Yeah. It was just like eye-opening. I'm like, wow, this really does make sense. Yeah. And after, I think what did it for me is we, we did our first customer service representative um, with Joan and we interviewed uh, the person who's still to there. this day with us. Yeah. And he said something that really struck me. And I said, because um, I asked him, I said, what, you know, what excites you about this, this opportunity? Yeah. And he said, Mark, I get to live the American dream in my living room. He's like, when I am done with what I'm doing or a task, I just turn off the camera. I go into my next room and my three boys are hanging out and I get to hang out with them for an hour and then I get to go back to work when I want. I was like, wow, that's brilliant. Yeah. And he's engaged and he's happy and they're so appreciative. I just feel like, and I'm, and, and, and I'm classifying Americans but it's, it's humanity. We are so entitled and, and used to a, a level of pamperedness that we don't appreciate really what we have. And, and these folks, because of their environment and where they live, yeah. they get an appreciation that I don't see where we, we travel and where we do business. And, and it's just, it's, it's a really cool, refreshing spin on uh, on a work ethic and an attitude that should be prevalent everywhere because we're all spo spoiled. Yeah, we're yeah. all, I mean, think about it. You have the equivalent of like 20 servants at your disposal just with that dumb phone. Yeah. So, so I feel like that's the main driver for me is mm -hmm. I get to help people that are in another area of the world and they're reciprocating in a magnificent way 10 times more than, than the market that we're in here. You primarily, they're customer service people. So tell me about what they do for you guys, how they work, mm -hmm. how Joan interacts and like what the relationships look like. I'm just, I wanna understand how the business is set up. Yeah, so we have them interacting with a lot of government agencies for yep. a lot of the things that they do. So because as a PEO, we're wrapped into garnishments, tax levies, yep all the things that people try to escape and the government's put in laws so that, you know, Johnny can't be a deadbeat dad because if you get a payroll, a real payroll uh, type position where you're paying taxes, you're trackable. Yep. So we get involved in that so that uh, our VAs do a magnificent job in tracking, making sure it's communicated to the government agency. Yep. They're not necessarily talking to our customers, mm -hmm. um, but they're doing the stuff that the government imposes on small businesses that now they get to do that opportunity where I can have my workforce in the States be more engaged with the customer so they, they have more time on their plate to do things like make a proactive call. How's it going, John? Anything I can do for you today? Wow, no, but that's awesome that my payroll organization is calling me proactively yeah. to get that relationship in play instead of being transactional. So I think that's, that's really one of the big wins that we um, uh, recognized because of the, the VA relationship. So there's a lot of manual processes that go on in running Infinity HR and the virtual assistants are integral in that, the day-to-day -day kind of business process. Absolutely, and uh, not just accounting functions, anything from you know proactively calling for unemployment claims because we're wrapped in unemployment process as well. So there's a lot of tedious things that go into an unemployment hearing because a lot of people, they're sitting on the couch after they get laid off and you know you don't have any money, so Maybe I'll just collect unemployment and see how that works. Yeah. Well, if it's a winnable case, we're going to fight it on the client's behalf because that's what we do. Yeah. So the VA opportunity allows us to, do, to be diligent and seeing things through. That's mm -hmm. what a lot of people don't get is you have to make sure you got it dotted and crossed 
Otherwise, that person's going to get unemployment. And by the way, that just affected our clients' rates. Yeah, makes sense. You guys use my time in and have a blended kind of workforce. So mm -hmm. some are in Baltimore, some are in the Philippines, and then you have people in like Florida and California. Like, how do you use my time in and and you? How does that all kind of integrate within your business? Yeah, and that's frankly, you know, with uh, with what what's going on with the blended workforce, my time in is genius because now you have a an unintrusive way of letting the employee know that hey, we're we're a blended workforce. You have an opportunity to work from home, yep. and you know what? If you do that, if you take that choice, because you can come in the office as well. Yep. If you if you make the choice of being a full time virtual employee, then we have my time in that mm -hmm. we install on the company paid for computer, La laptop, or laptop, and it's um, it's a, it's a way for us to 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 manage performance issues. You'll never hear from us. We don't even watch this stuff because I have no interest in monitoring other people. Yep. But you know what? If there's a performance issue, then we need to figure that out, right? What have you been doing? How many times have you been in front of the computer or touched your mouse or sent an email? So those are all trackable items under my time in. So we enjoy that. And I think we've only had to use it twice in the two, two or three years we've been using it. So it's, uh, it's cool. Uh, it gives people a check and balance system that says, you know what? If I'm leaning towards taking advantage of my situation, you're back in the middle because you can't. So uh, it's it's a and and I, I make no bones about it. This is not a babysitting service. This is us making sure you're accountable. I have accountability partners. I'm your accountability partner for making sure that you do an amazing job here, so that you can stay here for 30 years. Yeah, what I like about it too, there's like this ability when there is a performance issue as the owner or the leader or the manager of that person, now you have real data to help coach them. Because mm. usually it's a coaching opportunity. It's not a firing sure. thing. It's just an opportunity to get the data. It's like an Apple watch for your heart like or your, or your business. You know? you know if they're being productive, what they're doing, and then you can actually coach them to get better so they're more productive for your business. Yeah, brilliant. And from a cost perspective, it's pennies. Super Super cheap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Super cheap. What else? What What are the other experiences on your culture for the virtual assistant? Like, how did your team integrate? Because you have a big organization. Um, like, what was it like saying, "Hey, we're hiring some virtual assistants. We're gonna they're gonna come in and help our business." Like, how did you integrate into the existing culture? Yeah, I think you know, I mentioned before it was a little difficult because people uh, uh, here in the uh, in our in our company in the United States looked at it as, oh wow, we're gonna be losing our positions here because like the AI, AI uh, conversation, right? It's like yeah. all these people are coming in from a foreign land to invade our space and it, they're very reluctant to share things, to help train, to all that. And when we broke it down for them and we had to re educate them every couple of weeks because you, you know the brain yeah, wants yeah. to believe what it wants to believe. So the way we presented it is look, we want you to be more engaged with our customers, with our clients. We want you to have proactive conversations. We don't want to wait for the call and says, you guys suck and here are the reasons why. Now we're reactively trying to fix stuff. They've already made a decision that we're probably going to leave because you haven't given us enough love. Yeah. We have an opportunity now through the VA opportunities to create that space and that time and that love for our clients proactively instead of waiting for something to come get us. Right. So I, I just feel like um, because of that way we presented it, that we want, we're not firing people. Yep. We might not be scaling with American workers as much as we did, because that's the whole concept behind a VA is allowed to scale at more, better economies of, of scale from a price perspective. And you're, you're, you're tapping into another labor force that can teach as well, that can teach you how to be, because maybe you forgot your way. Yeah, uh, yeah. And when you look at these people and you see their faces, uh, it's exciting. Yeah. really is. What do you think, what, what value do you think uh, the virtual assistants bring to your business? Like if you had to quantify return on investment, money saved, revenue growth because these people are free, like what's the dollar equation? I would say about 75%. Savings? Yeah. So you hire somebody in the Philippines for I'm, my... If I'm paying somebody 50 grand a year with benefits and taxes, that's, you know probably close to 70 or $80,000, depending on what you're, what you're paying in benefits. Um, I don't pay benefits, I don't pay taxes on these folks. So, and the production level you get out of it, to me, seems like 
um, it's a it's it's at par or better than than what I get here for for a lot of the labor. For so the same human, the same person is worth seventy, eighty thousand dollars in the U.S. You can get at my outtest for twenty-three thousand dollars. Yeah, I think generally just the the fact that we are open to to this opportunity. And, you know, I talk to a lot of successful folks. And when I say I have a, you know, VA partnership, they're like, oh, what's that? And they're very intrigued about it. So, um, you know, we allow, we, we, we get to spread the word um, to, to help another society, basically, you know, because it's, you're talking about one country, the Philippines, right? Yeah. Area. And uh, it just seems like it's, it's cool because for years, we've always been more India focused. Yeah. And people got a really bad stigma for some reason against the Indian VA because of maybe the dialect or um, the way their culture is sometimes. The Filipino community is just, it's very similar to ours. It's very free. It's very conversational. Um, you don't get, uh, you know, that transactional mentality. Uh, yeah. At least I don't. So I just feel like it's, um, it's a really cool spin on, on something new and something that everybody should be embracing. That's cool. How has it been for Joan? Because she's the U.S. manager who's led this team. She's responsible for all this workflow. If she was here, what would she say uh, in this interview? I would say that 50% of her employees are, are virtual assistants, and she values them just like the people that are coming into the office every day. And the, the cool thing about it is we incorporate the VA uh, employees into our our program. So we have a dream manager program at, at Infinity where we meet with employees on a quarterly basis to kind of take out what's in their head and put it on paper and focus on it and try to achieve the goal. Because most people don't have accountability partners on what's in their head and what they want to do in life. So my my opening statement to people when they engage in a, in a dream manager session is my goal is to not have you die with any of your dreams. How has that helped your culture? I think people generally want to be cared for. Mm. And when you can show and demonstrate that um, uh, you, you have the capacity to uh, love somebody that, that works for you, I think that's, that's the magic in, in the Infinity Way right now. I think people truly, they know that we care about them. And it's not just a, you know that 50-year IBM relationship that people had in the past where you work for a dumb retirement plan that you cash out a million bucks or whatever it might be. I think this is a, a way of life where people can go home and look forward to coming to work because they know it's, it's just an extension of that. Um, Dave Osborne, one of, our, one of our mentors and peers, said to me, uh, well, well, not me, he, I, was in the, I was in the audience, and he said, the magic in what I do is I'm always working, but I'm always playing. And those two things, if you can intertwine them, it's an eye-opening experience because whether you're working, this is work, right? This is yeah. work. But we're having fun and we're playing too, right? Yeah, yeah, we're going to yeah. go ride 20 miles on a mountain bike as soon as we're done here. When you can incorporate that into your life so that it's the same, it's, uh, it's just a epiphany that I had after, after I heard that. And I've lived my life like that for the last 10 years. And it's, it's been the number one reason why I feel like I am truly happy. Wow.